everyone. My name is Kayla. I'm a UI UX designer volunteering for that ecosystem. And with me here is Alex. He's on the team for Cabal. So today, Alex will be taking us through Cabal and he will be showing us a demo on how to navigate Cabal applications. So over to you, Alex. Yeah, thanks, Kayla. Yeah, so I figured I'd just. Uh... So this is unprepared. I didn't really <laughs> know we we're going to have a demo. So in case there are any bugs, that's that's on me. But um, yeah, I wanted to basically demonstrate the uh, CLI client, which is the one that I use the most um, because I'm often in the terminal. We also have a desktop client that I, I know other people use as well. But CLI for me is kind of where it's at. Um, so this is kind of the repository for uh, uh, the client itself. Typically, if you've installed it via npm like this, you'll just run it like with this command. But I'll, I'm, I'm going to be using it this way. So we have some help options here that kind of, uh, yeah, show a few of the different things. But um, what we're going to do is we will uh, start a new cabal. And we're going to just do it in memory. So it's not going to persist anything to disk. Um, because that's just an easy way for me to demonstrate without having to clutter up anything. And when I press enter here, we'll start. You can see kind of this is the, the splash screen, if you will, that shows uh, some, some things like here's where you can find uh, the code. Um, you can see some uh, easy commands. Like, for example, right now, this is a new cabal. There are not that many channels. Um, we have some different commands here. And uh, to kind of get you started. Uh, but yeah, let's just uh, do some quick things. So one thing that's important is you want to name yourself somehow. So let's name myself demo person here. And now I just did control N to switch channels here. You can also do, for example, like this, you'll switch to that channel. Here's what it looks like when you types of stuff. Um, up here, I'm not sure if you can see this. Uh, I, yeah, it looks I like can. you can see that maybe. Yes, yeah, I cool. Can. Yeah, this thing up here is what we call uh, the Cabal key. So basically, uh, when you join a new Cabal, you'll paste this in there. And uh, that's what we use to derive a key to find other people. What we do is we don't actually use this thing when we look up in the Hyperswarm DHT, but rather we take a hash of this and then look up at the hash. Um, so only people who actually know the key will be able to uh, join the Cabal. Um, we also have this other part of it, as you might see here. And this is for moderation. So for example, let's say there's a Cabal that has a lot of history, like it's been going for a year or so. Um, and during that year, maybe there have been people who joined that were kind of assholes. Um, like I said, in another kind of context, we we have a um, a kind of a subjective moderation system. So you can you can hide people. Uh, one thing that's kind of tricky in this, these systems, though, is like okay, it if you have this old cabal and the assholes have been hidden. Um, then for the new people joining, they don't really have those actions. So with this kind of admin key, you can actually send a link to someone where they will trust you as an admin uh, and also inherit your um, uh, moderation actions so that when they join, um, their view will be pre-filtered according to like how it's filtered for yourself. So it's kind of a nifty way to um, get around this problem of like, uh, joining this old context, but without having any protections. So when you join via this like extra admin key, you do get, you do get some of those extra protections. Um, yeah, that was just kind of a aside. Um, like in most group chats, you can create a channel. Like uh, here's one called introduction, where maybe people introduce themselves. Um, you can also like, oops, this was a, a wrong channel. Let's just leave it leave channels, can display channels like this. Um, so the ASD channel didn't have any history, so it's not being displayed here. 
Um, another thing that's very common in these kind of chat systems is you can have a topic like, for example, here. So you can see it here, and I think even you can see when it's displayed here. Yeah, which just kind of creates you know the context for that particular channel. Um, and anyone can create a channel. Anyone can join whatever channels they want. Uh, if you're seeing someone, you know, creating spammy channels or something, uh, and it's just like taking up your view here, then you can actually archive them. Um, so if we do, we look at the channels thing again. It's archived. Um, and if that was a mistake, you can, I think, yeah, command is unarchive. Yeah. So we restore spam. Um, so yeah, it's kind of been somewhat battle tested because us devs, we've been using it since basically the start. Uh, so for four years or five years, 2018, time goes fast. Um, but yeah, these are kind of the basics. Uh, it's a group chat. Anyone can join, just pasting this key into a uh, client. Um, and this works even if you're like, for example, uh, on a train through Europe, and you just open up your cabal. You can be writing messages even if you don't have Wi-Fi. And when you get uh, internet again, those messages will sync up. And the messages that have been posted in the meantime will be uh, pulled down to your device. So one kind of inspiration for cabal was uh, this kind of you know somewhat old school style of chat called IRC, where people join basically with clients that look like this. Um, to have some group chat. But one of the big problems with IRC is there's no built-in way to uh, sync history when you've not been there. And that's kind of what Cabal really tries to solve. Um, this ability to um, reach out to other people on a like protocol level and receive history for the things that you didn't, you weren't around to uh, uh, receive. Um, and it, that it really works quite well that part um and we don't need to have any extra servers or anything it's just through the clients themselves so now that i'm having this client online um anyone could actually join if they just have this key uh, that's all that's needed um yeah and i'm not sure what else we have we have the moderation and stuff we have some commands i can maybe let's see here Let's join this cabal. Um, yeah, so you see, uh, you can see the history was pulled down here. The topic was set. So here we are, another person. You can see, as another person, we have the green at symbol, while as demo person, they have the green at symbol, and that just means like this person is an admin. Uh, so everyone is an administrator, uh, meaning they can take moderation actions from their own perspective. So if I wanted to hide demo person, I can do that. And you see now the chat disappeared for them. We can also see that they get a minus there to kind of indicate that uh, they're being hidden. If we would have a, a long kind of uh, list of users for this channel here, they would be sorted at the bottom. Um, but you can also do... Uh, is it unhide, maybe? Uh, you can also delegate uh, this kind of hiding and moderation capabilities to that person. So instead, if you wanted to make them a moderator, uh, now they're a moderator, which means that if they hid someone, um, they would be hidden for us as well. There's also kind of the, the last hire of moderation roles, which is admin. Um, oops, that's me. Yeah. Um, and basically the difference between a moderator and an admin is that moderators can't um, add other moderators for me. So if another person added a third person as a mod, I would still only have another person as my moderator. But now that they're actually an admin, any people they add as mods or admins will be uh, applied to me as well. So I will inherit those additional people. So it kind of grows um, 
in this in this kind of organic fashion you know like i trust someone and if they trust someone uh then since i'm already trusting this one person a lot i will trust this third person as well um and this subjective moderation system is pretty unique for cabal um and uh, it's worked pretty well in practice uh I mean, we've seen some bugs here and there because it's kind of a novel system. But in general, like we've had people join that have behaved really bad. And I've seen those people be hidden. Or sometimes, you know, I don't even see that they've done something bad. I just see the actions that someone hit them. And I didn't even have to see the bad stuff, um, which I think is really powerful. Um, yeah, I think maybe... That's the basics. I mean, we have another thing here that's pretty cool. We have um, we have end-to-end -end encrypted uh, private messages. Uh, let's see. So we have this kind of special security feature where you can toggle identifiers on and off. So you can see, for example, that even if there are five people named demo person, they still have these IDs that you can display. And I just turned this on and off by doing Alt-L. And we also have a command for it. Um, but let's see if I can DM this person, um, or PM, actually. Uh, yeah, so this is a private message, and it's completely private. Only me and the other person can, uh, can see this, and it, it's encrypted as well. So even if we had 5,000 people in this cabal, only me and the other person could actually decrypt and see the contents of this really important chat. And we use this a lot, actually. Uh, and you can see on the other one, this is how it kind of looks when you have PMs coming in uh, in a channel. So you don't miss any uh, PMs, basically. Some people like this functionality. Some people don't because they think it's uh, confusing. You know that it's it's visible in the channel, but only you that are receiving the PM can see this. But yeah, it's it's been um, it's been very useful this thing, and we use it every day to you know discuss development, and we've been using it since the start to discuss development. Um, so uh, yeah, that's really a useful thing for us. Not sure if you have any particular things you'd want to see. Um, uh, demo or not, Kayla, but uh, otherwise this was a somewhat comprehensive demo of the um, command line client for Cabal. Yeah, thank you so much for taking me through this, and I really understood every every bit of it. It was great to watch you navigate, and it's it, it's great. I can I can see the the idea behind Cabal. I can see the incentive. I can see everything from here and i can't wait to you know see how it look on an official website you, know, you mentioned the website during our interview and I, i'm just trying to imagine how beautiful it will look when it's finally um, pushed to when the website's finally pushed you know it'll be very great but thank you for breaking down cabal so that even an end user can understand and use it thank you so much yeah yeah of course and i mean that's the important part for us is um, we want people to be able to use it. Uh, and that's, of course, I mean, your designer, you know, that's an ongoing quest to kind of make things, uh, present them in ways that people understand, um, even if they don't have to uh, read the code, you know. So that's an important thing for us. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, aside this command line, is there mm -hmm. another interface of Cabal that users would see? Yeah, yeah. Um, let me see if I stop sharing here briefly. All right. I, have, I haven't run that in a long time, but perhaps I can just show you um, in the website. I think we have a screenshot here. And also, I mean, since Cabal is um, kind of, you know, private, for private chats, sometimes you know you have to be careful which cabals you open because you have the <laughs> the key there at the top. So it's uh, something we probably need to improve. Okay, I have a have the website here. This is the old website. Um, let me know if you see. 
So yeah, yeah so this is what the old website looks like. Um, you can grab some like download links here. And, oh. uh, so here's basically what the uh, the desktop client looks like. You have these little icons here that kind of mimic, you know, Discord or Slack, where uh, you uh, click on this one and you're in a dif dif different group chat. And this one is for this group chat. You see the channels here. You see kind of which people are online. They have a little green thing here. And online in this case means that you're actually directly connected with them. Uh, it's just your two computers talking. And yeah, we have, yeah, it's kind of a modern style interface, you know. We also have a dark mode for it. Um, and this has been worked on by a lot of really cool people. Um, like, I don't know how many, five, six, seven people have collaborated on this uh, desktop um, application over time. So it's very much a, a product of the community. It's, it's really cool. Um, and I know a lot of people like, prefer to use this one. Mm, uh, this is this is great. I can see it. Mm -hmm. it's, I can now you know envision everything you did in a command line because now I have a, a mental picture and it looks good. And I'm mm -hmm. sure the redesign will look even more good. Well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're starting with the website, um, uh, and then you know once we've implemented the new designs for the website, uh, we'll probably consider you know redesigning whatever the new desktop app would look like um, to be in the same kind of style. That would definitely make, make sense, you know, being in sync. That's that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Well done, Alex. Thank you so much for taking us through Cabal. And I wish you all the best. Yeah, thank you. And uh, thanks for time and for listening and uh, for for this opportunity to, to share our project uh, with everyone else. Here you can see some of the other people who have been involved in the, and are involved in Cabal. Oh, oh okay. I can yeah. see that. Yeah, and I, I believe a lot of a lot more people would, would definitely want to contribute or, you know, be involved in the community. And I can't wait to see Cabal Girl. All that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you.